What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Rudy, coming at you with a new video. And no, I ain't talking about DJ as in disc jockey. I'm talking about DJ as in dirt jumper. This right here, my common cell absolute, is what we're talking about today. And if you don't know what a dirt jumper is, you're about to find out. So most dirt jumpers come with 26 inch wheels, front and rear. Ain't no mold stuff around here. So the other thing about dirt jumpers is you only get one brake for the rear. Why do you need two? You do get a seat and a seat post, but you don't need that dropper. Not with this bike. You do need these grippy pedals with the spikes on them. Otherwise your feet might come off whenever you're trying to land a jump. You also need these beefy BMX style cranks. That way when you come down off those jumps without full suspension, they don't break on you causing you to die. You see that? No gears, no derailleur. You don't need them. Single speed, this thing will have you flying. You see that? 20 millimeter axle, through axle. Forget about your little old 15 by 110. We talking 20, DH size, clamped on, tight, made for use and abuse. Let's fly. Okay, so what I have here are both my hardtail mountain bike and my dirt jumper. I really wanted to just go through some of the similarity and some of the difference between the two bikes. That way you understand what makes a mountain bike a mountain bike and what makes a dirt jumper a dirt jumper. So even just on the initial walk up to these two bikes, you can already tell that here the Chameleon has got a much wider tire. It's got bigger lugs, it feels beefier, but the main thing is that the tire is so much more wide and beefy and the traction on it than that of the dirt jumper. You come over to the dirt jumper and you see that it's a very much narrower tire, but there it's missing like the big lug treads. It's got a much more sleeker design on the tread. Moving up the bike, the seat looks pretty similar it's a little bit smaller in diameter and it's also that much shorter and closer to the frame of the bike you come over and you look at the chameleon and it's got a little bit more of a space it's not as close to the frame as the other one but the biggest thing is that this seat is much longer and wider to provide some stability and comfort whenever you're sitting down and pedaling for a long period of time. Not to mention the little trigger that puts the seat up so that whenever you're pedaling for long distances, you're in a nice comfortable position. The dirt jumper on the other hand, it's a fixed pole. It is where it's at and you're going to be at a stand over height the entire time that you ride this bike. Moving up to the cockpit area, you can see that there are a lot of cables. We got front and rear brake, we have the dropper, we have the gear shifter. All four of these are, are combobulated into this bit of a mess as to where whenever you step over to the dirt jumper, it's a much cleaner cockpit mainly because you only have the one brake. There's no cassette to need a rear derailleur or a shifter to change the gears because it is a single drive system. You don't need a rear brake. So all of those components, you don't have the dropper, all of those components are gone, so you don't need that. You look over the front wheel and you also see the front wheel is the same as the rear, but just like the other bike, there's no there's no are just like the rear wheel there's no lugs on it it's a very sleek design built for maximum speed and traction on dirt jumps and pavement basically if you look over the cockpit here at the chameleon there we are a nice wide tire with big tread 
lots of lug on a bigger, stouter platform. Front wheel. Of course, you see no brake caliper or no disc brakes because you don't have a front brake set up on this kind of a bike. That's where on the Chameleon, you can see the disc brake and you can see the caliper. Also, one of the bigger differences is probably in the fork length, right? So this stanchion from here down to here is about 140 millimeters of travel on this fork. This fork, much smaller. From here to here, you're looking at only 100 millimeters of travel. Down here on the bottom of the fork, it does have rebound adjustment. And right here on top, you can see it's got high speed compression and you can lock it out. You can also change the air pressure on it, just like you can on the fork over here. You've got uh, a few more clicks. It's got a high speed and a low speed. Underneath this cap here, there's another air valve so that you can pump up the shock. But leading down to the bottom here, where the rebound adjuster is, there's also the axle here. Now this axle on this bike is only 15 millimeters and you can quick release it and put it back in place fairly quick. But on the dirt jumper over here, it's locked. It is locked in place with pinch bolts here. And it's also got a 20 millimeter through axle, kind of snugs up and tightens on the other side. That way you have a little bit more stiffness and rigidity to this front wheel because it's made for dirt jumps and lots of abuse. Obviously both bikes have cranks. You can see the cranks on the Chameleon, the cranks on the Common Cell Absolute. They're a little bit different. These are a BM, BMX style crank. Those are just your traditional BM, uh, just your traditional mountain bike crank. The rear back here, as you can see, there's no cassette. There's this one single drive. And on the hardtail, there is your cassette. There's all of your components to help switch gears, your rear derailleur. That way you can change speeds when you're going up or downhill, depending on what you need to do as far as looks go. Like what the eye can see. What I can't really explain to you is how these bikes feel whenever it comes to riding them. And the common sale on the street is a ripper. It's so fast. It carries speed so much better because it doesn't have these kind of tires on it that are going to slow you down. The frames are lighter because the frame on the common cell is shorter than the Chameleon. They're both aluminum, but as you can tell, there are a lot less components on the common cell on the dirt jumper than there are on the mountain bike because you don't need those kind of components for the dirt jumper as you do the mountain bike. So if you didn't know already, there are many different bikes for many different disciplines of riding bike. Um, and what you need to do is be able to know what that type of riding is so that you can purchase the right bike for that discipline of riding. I think this is starting to make sense, right? So if you are going to go out on a uh, a bike ride, let's say uh, hour long, and you're going to be up and down the terrain, you're riding single track, you're doing some jumps, you're doing some drops, and the terrain is going to be rough and rocky, maybe there's some roots involved, um, you're going to want to take the correct mountain bike for that kind of terrain. The hardtail mountain bike is going to be able to do 80% of all of that kind of riding. If you want to go to the pump track or dirt jumps, 
where the terrain is nice and smooth and fast, then you're going to want the dirt jumper in order to be the most efficient you can at whatever discipline you're doing. Yeah, this is really starting to make sense, okay? So, there's not really a one bike do it all. Any bike can do it all, but can it do it well, I guess, is what you want to make sure that you're doing, is you're getting the right bike to deliver the best efficiency that you can doing the discipline that you're doing, <laughs> that you're riding, doing the discipline that you're riding, something like that. So, I love both of these bikes, and I take actually both of those bikes out more than anything whenever I'm going for a ride. Here locally in the San Antonio area, uh, McAllister Park has got a pump track. They also have a really good trail system. So if I'm going to go to the pump track, I'll take both bikes. That way, if I meet some friends or some other guys, maybe I get tired of riding the pump track, so I get to put my dirt jumper away and pull out my mountain bike and go ride trails and be way more comfortable than I would be trying to make my dirt jumper do all the things that my mountain bike can do. Now, my mountain bike, specifically the mountain bike we're talking about, the Santa Cruz Chameleon, I can take that bike to the jump, to the, I can take that bike to the pump track and it will be at home. It really will. I can do just about everything on that bike at the pump track that I can with my dirt jumper at the pump track. But it's not as efficient. It is not. It, it, is, it is so much more of a workout doing that. You're, you're using so much more effort to do the things that you want to do with that kind of a bike on that kind of a track or terrain versus having the dirt jumper. I really hope this is making sense. I feel like I'm circling back around. I don't want to do that. I don't want to waste your guys' time. So if there are any questions, please post them down below. I would love to visit with anybody about anything on either one of these bikes, but don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and go ride your bike. Peace out.